Today we're going to have a look at a pen that has a model. It's a model that I really like. I, I like it, but this is also, as far as I'm concerned, the most gorgeous finish you can get it in. And uh, I got this from um, uh, panchalet.com and it is an Omas. Omas, okay? Omas, a uh, nice Italian brand, been around for quite a while, 1925 established, um, and uh, they, they do really, really nice stuff. Uh, outer box, you have a fairly heavy inner box, pops open, it's all very nicely lined, and this one says Italian creativity, history, craftsmanship, the pleasure of writing. That's a very good Mill Cuckfield thing. The pleasure of writing. Ah. Um, so that's uh, it's very nice. It's also very heavy. This is really a solid box. Uh, and then in there is this very cute little package. Uh, there's a bottle of ink. Uh, this is actually Omas Blue. I think it came with Omas Black, but I, uh, you know, I, I just switched it out just for the review. That's what I had at hand. And then you have the box. Now the little. This is also a really nice little lip you can pull. Ah, try doing that with one hand in a review. And then this comes out, if you're lucky. And on uh, there is this big thing, which is one pen, or you have the, the bottle and pen holder. Below that is a little booklet. It's a pretty decent booklet, a history of the company, etc. etc. Uh, some of the pens they have launched, it's nice, colorful. It's pretty, pretty decent, uh, I would say. Uh, there is the uh, Omas um, Leave Your Sign Handwrite. Visit our boutique online, omas.com. Uh, and there is one final piece of paper which I can't get out, uh, but that's just to congratulate you on um, uh, purchasing this pen. Okay, the pen is found in its own little sleeve. It has a little sleeve that has Omas on it too. Uh, as far as I know, all these Omas pens come with these sleeves. Some are bigger, some are smaller, depending on the size of the pen. Uh, but I think it's a really neat idea. You have something to, to keep your pen safe. You don't have a pen pouch. If this is the only pen you have purchased, you have something to put it in, which I think is, is very neat. Okay, now, here we have the Omas Paragon, uh, which I think should be considered the, the flagship model in the Arco celluloid. Okay, so here we have the Omas Arte Italiana Paragon. Um, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. First sip of tea. Okay. Top of the cap, fenil, very nice. Big, round thing. I thought it was a type of Lord of the Rings thing, but then I realized it's the O for Omas. That actually makes sense. Done it, yeah. Okay. We have the clip, and the clip has a unique shape. Uh, this is an, an Omas thing, like Visconti has this arch with a little spring in it. Omas has this. It's not really spring-loaded or anything. It's actually pretty stiff, but it has a little wheel. And that means that if you put it in a shirt pocket, don't have a shirt pocket because I'm wearing a t-shirt, boom, just slides in, boom, slides out, that's all. Very, very nice. I think it works really well. Uh, this uh, celluloid is quite simply stunning and it looks really nice on that side but if you look at this that is magnificent it's very hard to capture this in in pictures or words but that is absolutely stunning it is polished to a super high level it's almost like a little mirror and this has a pattern in it guys it's in it's incredible and again very hard to to capture on camera but if you ever are fortunate enough to to hold one of these in a store um, you're probably going to be blown away. Very, very attractive. Okay, it says Omas there, and then it has a Greek key uh, on the center band, and then at the back there, I don't know if you can read that, but it says, The Paragon, Italy. The Paragon, Italy. Uh, barrel, piston turning knob, has an internal piston, very simple, works very well, and draws up a fairly humongous amount of ink. It, it really, this one will last you for quite a while especially if you have this type of nib on it. This section is vermeil, or in other words, uh, silver with gold on top. Uh, and that means it actually has hallmarks. The hallmarks are very small. I don't think I can really show them very well to you. 
Um, I also have to admit I'm not an expert, I don't know what all of them mean, but in any case, uh, there are the, the, the silver hallmarks. Uh, neat. Threads, not sharp, and a pretty big section, and what I really like is that, uh, I think it's, wasn't it 12 sided? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Yes, 12 sided ring. It probably looks like it's round because of the reflection, but this ring here, you can maybe see it a bit better like this, is actually 12 sided. And then you have a big nib on there. In this case, it's a fine. I picked a fine because I have used another Paragon which had a fine nib. And I found that a very pleasant nib, and this one is perfect. This is not scratchy, no feedback, an ultra smooth fine nib. Very, very impressive. 18 karat gold, and it has uh, something I really like the um, uh, uh, arrowhead uh, design that Omaz does. It looks a bit like an, an arrow, which I think is very cool. Uh, that's pretty much all this to it. So, uh, as I said, it's a piston filler, there's no section to unscrew or anything. Um, beautiful pen. But one thing that's really cool to point out is the ebonite feed. A lot of people really like ebonite for feeds. Uh, it typically works well, flows well, uh, you know, gives good flow, and of course you can heat set it. it should at some point never be any issue with your, your uh, feed and nib getting a bit misaligned like that. The flow will be hampered, put in a cup of hot water, so not the whole pen, just the feed for maybe 30 seconds, squeeze them together, and usually that's all that's required. Doing that with a plastic feed may end, you, know, you may, may end up with a molten feed, so that's very cool. Ebonite also just gives generally very good flow, um, so that I think is really, really neat. What do I like about the pen, what do I not like about the pen? It's a gorgeous pen. This is a conversation piece, uh, and I, I also have a black one that's just black, um, also very nice, uh, that looks a bit uh, gloomy because of the black, this is I think a bit uh, fancier uh, because of that nice celluloid, uh, but it's just fantastic, I really love it. I also really like the size, uh, it's, a, it's a beefy pen, not super thick, not like a Delta Dolce Vita or maybe a Montblanc 49, very usable, perfectly balanced, because you have a metal section, celluloid, uh, barrel, uh, the weight is there, just where you want it, um, fantastic. You can post it if you really want to, but then you end up with a really big pen. To be honest, I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, it's I find it very comfortable to use as it is. I think that's that's great. Uh, and as I said, the nib, the nib is fantastic. Ultra smooth, no feedback, beautiful, wonderful writer, even though it is a fine, and that is not a small feat to accomplish. Things I don't like about it so much. Well, there are a few. Um, I just said it's very well balanced because of the metal section, but imagine this with a section that matches the barrel. That could be a bit too much for some, but I think it would be a very cool thing and I would definitely like to see one, just see what it would be like. Um, what the pen lacks is an ink window. So even though it is an internal piston, you have no idea how much ink is left because you, you can't really access it. And for some reason, Omas pens are, I don't know, they, are, they have nuclear pistons. When you um, turn this when the pen is full, ink will literally squirt out. It will not just bubble a bit, no, there will be a, sh a small stream of ink uh, squirting from the tip, which, which can be a bit disturbing, especially if it hits you in the face. Now, um, having said that, that's all I have. I think it is a beautiful pen, it's been around for a long time. The original Paragon models were smaller, they're much closer in size to what a Mylord is these days, so that's the, the, if this would be a Mont Blanc, this would be the 149, and the model below it is uh, the 146, or the, the Mylord in uh, uh, Omar's uh, terms. I do have a Mylord in the same material, fantastic pen too, but as I said, the original uh, uh, Paragon was a bit smaller, so if you ever find a vintage one, it's probably going to be quite a bit smaller and a bit thinner, but this is a beautiful, nice, wonderful, oversized pen. Uh, the final thing, something I didn't like too much, is that I got this uh, with uh, actually some patina on it. It had stained a little bit, as I said, it's silver with a gold cover. It's very simple, uh, a jeweler's cloth uh, took that off, but even so, you can see it a little bit in the 
threads. I don't know if the camera really picks it up, but right there, right above my finger, you can see a darker line, and that's actually staining. Um, just you know, a reaction with the with the metal, and that's hard to, to clean off in the threads. But to be honest, you see it of course mainly in the section. It is silver. It will require occasional polishing. But you can easily do that with a jeweler's cloth. Uh, I think right now I actually have a a small stain. Uh, again, don't know if you can really see that about there. So that would have to be polished. Very easy. That's it. Beautiful pen. Wonderful pen. And I've been dribbling on long enough. You really need to see how it writes. So that's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with... The Omas Paragon. The nib is fine, and the ink is SBRE Brown. Ultra smooth nib, glides across the paper, not at all scratchy, and pretty much no feedback. This is a, the lazy, well now it's going to say phased dog. Works very, very well. Fast writing. No skips, just beautiful, smooth, soft writing. Very, very nice. Now, as to wetness, here you have a very well-tuned nib in, of course, a very well-behaved ink. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty wet. Line variation. You can definitely squeeze out some line variation, but clearly you don't want to push this one too hard. It's not a flex nib. Reverse writing possible. Get an extra fine, maybe extra extra fine, and that's a bit more uh, feedbacky when you do that. Okay, that's it. Hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later.